Well, hello and welcome to FC Cymru. And you join us at Jenna Park, home of Barrytown United, and more on that in just a moment. But we will also be talking to a man who has done so much for Welsh football at international level, at the age grade setup as well, identifying new talent. Even though he's only six inches tall, we go and talk to Brian Flynn. Fantastic. Uh, and as you may have noticed, we are at Barrytown United. So we are here because they are right in the middle of a Welsh Premier League title race. There is a Welsh Premier League title race. Yes, this is fantastic news. And we're here to meet a man ripping it up at the moment, Mo Touré. And there is also another man. Now, this man has been at the Central Welsh Football for donkey's years. And if you talk to any of the international players who've come through the age grade system, they go all dewy-eyed and smiley when they talk about him. He retired last year and we went to meet a guy that people simply know as Cled. Indeed we did. But first of all, should we go to you looking smart in Port Talbot? Mm, yes, put on a suit and everything to meet Brian Flynn. Leon Barton is the author of uh, Little Wonder. Never written a book before? No, first, first book. Why this one? It was a story that needed to be told and uh, no one else seemed to be doing it and uh, so I thought I'd give it a go myself. I get a sense that this one was also a lot of fun. It was hard work because I'd never done anything like it, but obviously when you're a, when you're a football obsessive like I am, there's there's yeah a lot of joy in watching old clips and just you know talking about football, forming opinions about football, and trying to kind of form some sort of structure around the, around the book. Um, but it, yeah, it it was it was tough. It was tough going. It was it was the toughest thing I've ever done. Really, it was mentally draining. But it was uh, yeah, it's definitely a sense of um, accomplishment there when I'd done it. Brian was the only one who took, he was the one who gave me an opportunity. No one else wanted to give me an opportunity. So when I got the phone call from Brian to come down, it was like, I didn't care. I was like, come down. But I owe him so much, you know. No, like I say, at the time, no one wanted to give me an opportunity. I wanted to go out and play first team football on loan. No one would do it, except for Brian. I got a phone call, Brian said, look, come down. Two week trial, you have a look at us, we'll have a look at you and we'll go from there, but um, no, let's say, we talk about Swansea and me being there for so long, but without Brian giving me the opportunity, you know, there wouldn't be the history of me and Swansea. Why do you think he, he, he stands out? Why there's so much respect for him? He's great at finding talent, seeing talent that maybe other people don't see, uh, and identifying it early. You just enjoy playing for him, you know, just that freedom of going and enjoy football, the good players, I don't have to give you loads of information and get on with it, and that's, you know, that, that kind of man management skill was, was second to none with Brian. Brian, what a lovely evening. Have you enjoyed? Oh, absolutely. Old friends reminiscing some of the off air, some really good stories that I'd forgotten from uh, from the past, the younger days in school, and then obviously the early football, the footballing days, and then obviously uh, warm, a warm reception for my career, but uh, that's, that's what I expect from Port Talbot. This side in the 70s, what was that like to play in then? There's a great players. Oh, it was a there. good team, the system. We had a 4-3-3 system with uh, Leighton James playing wide on the left, two strikers, Alan Curtis, John Toshak, playing alongside Terry Orth and John Mahoney in midfield. was like a dream, a perfect midfield partnership trio. And uh, as a young player coming in, you, you're made instantly as part, a major part of the team. What your career sums up is the importance of foundations. Yeah, you have to have a, you have to have a foundation, but key to that is player knowledge. If you haven't got player knowledge, you've got nothing in football. That's why I would go out seven days a week to, to watch players, because you never know where you might see the next gem. And so it's important all your player knowledge is at the very top end and is constantly topped up. So that's how you get the best and you can able to build a team over a period of time. What are you looking for? How do you know when you've uncovered a little gem? And, 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 and you, you're pretty sure that nobody else has spotted it? Look, everybody can see the best ones. Everybody's looking at the best ones. It's that level below, that, as I mentioned earlier, has he got potential? Are you able to get that potential to a higher level? And that's the real art of spotting a gem. If you had a law to live by in the Book of Flynn, what would it be as a coach? A technique, insight, personality, and speed. 
Simple. The duel, and every one of them was sitting inside every player. Not the only one table was a baby chair. <laughs> I think it's funny. I got in it. <laughs> I'm really quiet. I do feel that we can speak up because they're right in the middle of training and it's a very important bit. Dav's giving him a right good team talk. Well, in the midst of that team is a young man called Motori. Now, he is on loan from Newport County and while he's been here, he's been A, amazing, and B, earned himself a call up to the under-21s with Robert Page. Brilliant stuff. He's been doing fantastically well. Should we go and meet him? Let's do that so they can get on. Who is Motore? Uh, he's alright, enjoying the Welsh Prem and doing better than what I thought I would have done when I first came here and the people around Barry enjoy me playing so I'm just happy making everyone else feel good about themselves. So, so on loan from Newport County, so the call comes in saying there's an offer of going lo on loan to Barrytown United, what was the initial response? Well when I first heard the gaff of Newport said that I was going to go on loan, I thought, yeah, that's what I need. Game, experience and play men's football. When he said that Barry are looking to take you on loan, I thought, this is a very good club because we played them two seasons ago in a pre-season game and I've watched a couple of their games and I thought, yeah, I'd love to go there. And when I heard the news, I was over the moon because it's not far from me, for one, and I know some of the players who are here and I enjoy playing. So I thought, yeah, I can't wait to put a kit on do as best I could and so far I've, Im I've improved from last year and I feel like there's more to come of me. My aim is to get 10 or more goals this season so if I get that then I've reached my target, if I can get more then that's a bonus really. Gav and Michael Flynn, they're two big characters, big coaches, are, are, there, are there big differences the way they approach things? They're very similar, they know what they want from their team, they know the structure of how things go and they know opponents very well and they like to go into details about them and they both have the same structure of how they want to play, how they want to look at teams and they always end up getting results and as you can see now they're both successful, both got good connections with each other so what they're learning they give into other players and I'm lucky to have them too coaching me because I'm improving as a player so I'm glad that I've got that opportunity. They're obviously doing well with their coaching because they're going on to do their pro licence and I feel like they're improving and they're helping me improve as well. Mm. And it's paid off. You get a call, come up to the uh, Robert Page, is on the phone, under-21's manager, says come and join us in the under-21 setup. How did that go? Um, I was over the moon when I found out. Um, I didn't expect to come on, so that was good. And I came on at a late stage where I thought that was good for me. I thought that I came on at the right time. It was a hard game to come to, but I thought I did well when I got given a chance. And I looked at the game again and I thought that I could hopefully yeah. get another caller. Who, uh, who messaged you first afterwards? Was it uh, Gav or was it uh, Flynn with, uh, with a, a congratulations, well done, anything like that? Oh, I think they both messaged me at the same time, but... <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah. I, I just had messages off everyone saying congrats and I just, can, I just want to thank everyone that supported me from when I was at the bottom. Mm. I'm just happy that they still stuck with me. And then finally, um, 19s, 21s. Who's uh, whose spot you got uh, got your eye on in the uh, the senior setup then? Oh, I don't think I can say that yet because I don't know. I just want to keep playing and improving, and hopefully, if I do well at 21's level, if I get to the first team, then I just want to show what I can do to everyone that don't know who I am yet. But my aim is just to keep playing, keep injury free, and hopefully smash it. Yeah, hopefully smash it. And that, good people, is Mo Torre. And what a lovely lad as well. Best of luck to him for the season. Yeah, super stuff. Great to see him in the league. Great to see him performing so well. And it just shows there's a real pathway. If kids want to come and play in the Welsh Premier League, there's a real future for them. Indeed, indeed it is. Now, the sharp-eyed among you will have noticed that there is more than two of us. And that's because we wanted to talk a little bit about the Welsh Premier League title race. But to do that, we thought we need to talk to someone who knows 
about the Welsh Premier League <laughs> title race, which is why we brought Scorio's Dylan Ebenezer in. Welcome, welcome to Epsom. Thanks very much. It's, it's, it's an honour to be here. It is, Watched isn't it? the shows, yeah. loved it, loved it. Um, uh, great to be here. Uh, and of course, we're here at uh, Janet Park and Barry Town. Many wouldn't have picked them to be in the title race at this point, and yet here they are, one point off as we speak, and really enjoying themselves. Oh, absolutely, and um, we love watching them as well. And the fact that you're mentioning a title race just makes me smile. People say I smile anyway, but I'm smiling because there is a title race this season in the Welsh Premier League. It hasn't been one for a while. Saints have just been absolutely dominating it. But I'm not sure if Barry are part of it. Think they are, I think they are. People will argue with me about that one. But Connors Key are there, it's tight, so it's great for us. Bit of excitement. Well, there is somebody who wouldn't agree with you, and you might be surprised to figure out who it is, but it's actually Gavin Chesterfield, the manager of Barry Town United. Gav, thanks for having us along this evening. Uh, Barry Town United flying this season, mate. One point off the top. Um, can you stay with it? Can you stay in this title race? Oh, we're not in the title race, man. I know what I'll be the feet this, you know. Come no, is this what you learn on the pro life, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't learned that yet. No, um, no, the truth is, is that look, the two teams above us are full time, yeah. All right, and we're a point away from TNS. Somebody said that to me after 12 games, I'd have snapped your hands off, mm. you know. So, uh, for us, it's about being humble, it's about working hard, and it's about being the best we can be, you know. And the target hasn't changed last year. We wanted to beat, or this year, we want to beat our target of last year. And if we do that, and you know, we'll see where it takes us. Great for the Welsh Premier League, though, to have teams competing so closely at the top of the table this time round. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you've got to give other teams credit as well. I think Newtown have had a really good start mm -hmm. the season as well. You know, Carnarvon have been a great addition to the league, and yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's you know the Welsh Premier League is exciting again, and I think that's what it needs. Well, Gav says not, but do you think that they can sort of hang on to the coattails of those big two? And then I guess you've got Baller in there as well, haven't you? Yeah, I don't know. Um, the squad's got so much better. Mm -hmm. You look at them recently, and the bench is impressive. All the ex-pros, the first thing they do, they look at the bench, don't they? They want to see what, what strength and depth they got. And Barry have got some strength and depth. Uh, I think we'll see. I think they might just be in it. Newton have had an amazing start to yes, the season yeah, yeah. as well. You wouldn't expect everybody to keep up with them, but something special going on here. And uh, I wouldn't put it past them. Can you pick a, a winner at this point? End of the season? Who's going to be there? Who's lifting the cup? Oh, it's easy to say the news. I wouldn't be surprised if Connors Key do it this year. They're on a mission, and if Andy Morrison's on a mission, look out. <laughs> it's not a brave man will stand in his way. So I wouldn't be After surprised. You. <laughs> yeah. I think Barry yeah. will push it. I don't know if they'll last the whole nine months, because the second part of the season then, it's you go top six, bottom six, so you're playing the big boys every week. They're good enough, because they've beaten them this season. They've beaten Bala twice already, so they're doing well. Uh, but I might just say Connor's key. <laughs> Interesting you said about uh, fans coming through the gate. So big November, I think... These guys play Connors Key, they play TNS back to back. I think one of the games is after Wales play on the Friday. So if you're a fan, why not come along? Well, yeah, it's easy as someone who watches a lot of the games in the league. You know there's a good product here. How do you get that message out? It's a tough one. Ballytown coming back was a massive boost to the league because they get they're a club with pro tradition, fans here, they've got you know, guys ringing bells in an atmosphere. Carnarvon have come back in and they're getting over a thousand on a Friday night. So it's there. There's a, it just needs to be tapped into somehow, but I know loads of people, once they come down, it's getting them there for the first time, and then once they're there, they, they tend to come back. Oh, well, th uh, Dylan, thanks very much. Thank uh, thanks very much for a, a debut appearance on oh, FC well, Cymru. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, and I'm cold. <laughs> and you're cold. He is cold. He is, he is cold, but, um, you know, uh, some of us wear hats. Um, <laughs> We're going to go from uh, Jenna Park here, and we're going to meet a guy who has... I mean, Dollar's been knocking around Welsh football for years, but there's a guy who has been <laughs> knocking around Welsh football for a lot longer than that. He's been at the centre of the age-grade setup in the Wales team just for years. And you talk to any of the Wales players, and they know this man, and they absolutely adore him. He announced his retirement uh, last season, but we felt that we needed to get to know a man that everybody simply calls Cled. The most important man in Welsh football that no one's ever heard of. Apparently that's, that's you. I wish it was. That would be excellent, <laughs> wouldn't it? I, I can see that now when they bury me. That's it, you know. Uh, I wish, I wish. Been involved for a long time, obviously. How long have you been involved with the FAW? 
With the FAW, uh, 10 years with Oshan and, and his uh, team, obviously. The first type of international involvement I had was when James Collins was an under 15. And then since that time, of course, there's been hundreds of them. And, and I love the fact that I keep in touch with the majority of them, to be fair. Even, you know, the most famous who have gone on to play in the Premiership to those who are still playing local football in their own village or county. I still keep in touch and I love doing that. You're there just for the lads, really, to make sure that if there is a problem, them they can approach you you've got to be approachable um, and certainly with the experience I've had I can more or less sort most problems out so you've got to get them to do schoolwork they come here to play football and you've got to get them to do school <laughs> that, that's that right? the most difficult um, <laughs> can you imagine you know 18 boys wanting to come play football and uh, they just hate the idea that they've got to uh, do um, schoolwork do they take it okay are they kind they're of good focused? they, oh, they yeah, hate yeah. it to be fair yeah, yeah. you know it's, it's <laughs> like uh, taking them into a, a sweet factory and then saying you can't eat the sweets um, because they come in they have to do the schoolwork to be fair they, they do they do a good amount of work on, on the on the camp because it is hard they're tired you know they are tired When I first came to Wales, um, he was always the smiley face that would like introduce himself, make you feel welcome, and yeah, probably as soon as I got there, he was the person that made me feel most comfortable. He was a big part of the Wales setup, and you know, I know he helped me and Tyler like, massively, you know, settling into the group, making making us feel part of the team already, like, and he, you know, his smile was amazing and great guy. 2016 live long in all our memories. The semi-finals obviously there, but you've been there while Ethan Ampadu, Ben Woodburn, Harry Wilson have all come through the system. You think they can surpass what was done? Yes, I really do. Um, I remember saying to a broadcaster uh, when we won the Victory Shield that this group of players will, will go on to great things, and I still believe that. And with those players, there's obviously a lot of English-based players, players yes. of Welsh heritage. Yeah. How do you get them to feel all why do they, how do they feel Welsh? Do you guys go through? I, I, th I think it starts from the very beginning when you get them into the regional camps and then into the national camps. You make them realise how important it is. Um, the philosophy that everybody has, uh, Ian Gwynne Hughes is with the FAW, has really brought that to being as well with the first team. And I try and convey that because I'm a very, very true Welshman at heart and I'm very proud of that. Um, and the way we approach singing the national anthem and I give them a bit of the history of that, history of Wales, and they see what's involved and, and they appreciate that and they take it on board. Um, and I've got so much admiration for them for doing it and learning the Welsh National Anthem, which is so difficult, and they do it in a matter of weeks. And they, do, they throw themselves into it? Oh yes, they're not, if, you were, if, you were, if you were on X Factor, we wouldn't have much of a chance, but they learn the words I've heard and they you do it rap, well. You get them to wrap it as well. We do, we wrap it as well, yes, that goes down quite well. Yes. Wrap the... Oh yeah, you can wrap the National Anthem quite well, yes. Oh yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm not going to do it now. <laughs> I'm no, almost no. tempted to have you do it. But it's quite easy to do, yeah. actually, and they do lo love doing it, yeah. My Edward had iron, and will he me glass bay? Yeah, literally, we would do the national anthem once a day, probably, and it's good. Obviously, you're learning the national anthem, you, you're getting confident at it, and He's, he's at the front doing his little thing, but yeah, he, he's, a great, he's a great person. You're not going to uh, leave us completely, are you? No, I'm retiring retired? from this squad uh, in November. Uh, some of the parents are still taking the mick. They're waiting for me to retire and I still haven't. Uh, but I will be finishing in November, but not with everything else. No, I'll be carrying on. Uh, and it's with great regret, but... I'm so proud I've been involved and I'm so grateful. Uh, not bad at all, not bad at all. It's a massive part of, I'm sure, a lot of kids' Welsh careers and if he's retiring then I just want to say thank you and, and he's done an amazing job. Fantastic servant for the, the way I've set up and, you know, he's a great person with uh, great morals and, you know, he's a, played a big part in my Welsh career and so obviously thank you for everything you've done for me, mate.
see. See what I mean? They all go very smiley, don't they? They do, they do. And we spoke to, obviously, Tyler Roberts and Matt Smith there. And that was after being beaten 4-1 by Spain. We did see a couple of the other senior players who were like, oh, we love Claire. I don't really feel like talking. And that was some of the senior boys who'd just been beaten. Because he, he had the whole spectrum. He had them from, like, Wayne Hennessy, even before then, who've come through under Claire's tutorship. Fantastic. Oh, man. Well, best of luck, Claire. And uh, good luck in your retirement. Enjoy, enjoy. Something tells me he's not going to properly retire. No. <laughs> then men like Claire don't ever no. retire. Yeah, ever. ever. However, we are reaching retirement point in this programme, though. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's been great. Uh, we've obviously seen a lot behind the scenes of the Welsh Premier League. We, we've seen the title race that's there. Uh, and if you've got the chance to go and visit your local club over the next few weeks, I highly recommend it. Yeah. As ever, this is the part where I say if you want to reach out and touch us, then you feel free to do that. Uh, the details are across the bottom of the screen right now while I look at Lawrence Morris staring at this football longingly. So Welsh uh, Premier League ball. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Miss it would they? No, no. Okay. See ya.